there it goes. Hey y'all. Oh. How are y'all doing? Okay. Hello everyone. How are y'all doing? Y'all ready for a little little bows? Some little bows. Alright. I wanted to show you. We added a whole bunch of new signs I wanted to show you. Okay. So we'll look through the signs, but. I'm just going to do um, some ribbons with a couple of one and a half inch ribbon. We're just going to use like one ribbon to do the bows. Because I think we all kind of get caught up into the fact that we have to have like four or five ribbons and we really don't. Okay. So I have a really pretty tulip ribbon and I have a little Easter egg ribbon. Okay. So how are y'all on this Friday night? Hello, hello. I get that. Good evening. Okay. There. <laughs> I could not get that thing off. All right, here we go. Zoom down in here so we can see. Zoomy. There. All right. So, there's so many ways to do bows. One of the ways that I really like to do it, when I'm just going to do like one single ribbon, is I like to do it, and you can do it by hand. So what I do is I measure out a tail, let's say like 14 inches. Oh, well we're glad you're here. I'm gonna pinch it, so when I pinch the ribbon, it's like that, you see how it's just gathered up? And then I'm gonna make a small little loop, about like that, so that's about three inches, okay? All right. I'm going to pinch it like that. I'm going to go about to a, like a four inch loop. Well, let's start with like a three inch. About a three inch loop. Okay, so three. I'm twisting. I'm going to do another three. So back to the center. I'm going to pinch it. Twist it. All right, then I'm gonna go just a little bit bigger than that one. So you can see I'm kinda about, about maybe half an inch bigger. Okay, and then I'll twist it. And what you can do is if your hands hurt, just start to put it in, your, in between your thumb and your finger. We're gonna go about a half inch back to the center, twist. This makes a really pretty bow. So remember, this is our center bow. And we're just going to go back and forth. Like that. So each time, I'll kind of lift up my thumb, put it in there, twist it, come out. You can also do this bow without twisting. So the reason I'm twisting is because when you twist it, you're going to get a bigger fluff. But there's, you don't have to twist your ribbon if you don't want to. If that's hard for you, then don't twist it. You see how I'm just going like a half inch? Yeah, twisting. Just like that. Okay. This ends up being a really pretty bow. Okay. So my general rule of thumb when I'm making bows is to have about six loops on each side. So we have one, two, three, four. This is our center loop. 
Okay. Let's see, did we twist it yet? Okay. Right back there. I can tell that I am twisting it because I'm bringing that pretty side of the bow back up. So you see how when I pulled across, the underside is showing? So when I twist it, then the pretty side shows again. Okay? Don't worry if they start kind of moving out of your hand. It's not going to matter. We're going to do one more. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So we got one more, and then that'll be it. Okay? So about half inch. Twist. So now, pull that a little bit, a little bit. I'll just measure it out to our first tail. <laughs> there we go. Then I will get a zip tie. What I'm going to do is put the zip tie and just kind of put it underneath my thumb. Then I'll pull the zip tie around. You're going to get it. <laughs> Am I making your hand hurt? Well, I'm going to show you how to do it in the bow maker too. Okay, so just like that. So you see there's our center loop. Okay. There. This is really nice ribbon. Okay, so let's get... I will put pipe cleaner on here. Choo pink. Here we go. Me too. I love pink and green color combinations too. All right, now, this is actually a very pretty bow. What I like to do is pull the loops apart like this. And then it makes the bow much larger. You'll have to twist one of the tails to get it to go forward. But you see how nice and big and fluffy this is, even though we didn't really use that many ribbons. So I'll kind of go opposite ends. So like if I take my big one here up to the top, I'll take the big one here over to the bottom so on and so forth. That way I kind of get the largest bow I can. But look how pretty that is. See how pretty that was? Look at that. Isn't that a pretty bow? It's a really pretty bow. I need to lift y'all up a little bit, don't I? Let's see. Right about like that. Okay, there we go. So you can see, and then you just run your hands under the tails, and you got a nice little bow. Isn't that pretty? All right, now. If you want to do a bow like that on the bow maker, right, same process. Okay. So we're looking for about a three inch loop right there. Okay, and then we're gonna go four. four, then like four and a half, four and a half, okay, then five, five, okay, I know, you can't believe I'm using this full holder, I know. It's funny, isn't it? That's because I had it on there while I was doing it by hand. Okay, five and a half, six, there we go. So exact same process. You see we're doing the same process. What's different is the bow is actually upside down.
there. One, two, three, four, five. We need one more. Okay. So just a little bit larger. Look at that, perfect amount of ribbon. Just a little bit larger. There we go. Zip tie here. Now what's interesting about this is we made this bow, but it's upside down. So you still want to use where the center is, but this bow, so usually, right, usually this is the bottom of the bow, this is the top of the bow. But with this bow, we have the bottom is the top and the top is the bottom. So don't let that confuse you, it is a little different. So the way you take it off the bow maker is the way it's gonna go. So let's get another pipe cleaner. Okay. Right there. Pull it tight. So the reason I wanna show you this is because I wanna show you that even if you see someone make a bow by their hand online, you can still do the same thing with your bow maker, even if it seems like you can't. You can make the same bows that they did. It's just a slightly different process. So you see, there was a reason I was hurting my hands. <laughs> there. So now you can see, now with the bow maker, we're gonna have to fluff it a little bit more because when you're doing it in your hand, you don't have to fluff as much. But you're gonna see, this is the same bow. Okay, there's our little center bow, our little center loop. Look at there, see, same bow. One by hand, one on the maker. So. You can still do these. You just want to kind of think the process through. So because of the way that this bow is made, we had to do it upside down so that we could do each one of our links kind of out. There we go. What was the question? Oh, the ribbon's from my shop. Oh, you want to see the Monarch butterfly? Yeah. So the uh, ribbon is from my shop. It's just shophardworkingmom.com. I just don't see the comments while I'm, while I'm doing the bow because it's just too hard to pull it up. But I do. I do. Okay, you want to see the Monarch bow? Hold on. I mean the breeze. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this is the one we did last night. So there's the sign and here's the wreath. So this one was just the poof method with two ribbons, only two ribbons. All right, let's put that back there. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so my shop is um, shophardworkingmom.com. It's also in my bio. All right. Which, uh, which bow maker that has the single prong? Oh, are you talking about this one? Is this the bow maker that you got? Is that the bow maker you got? So these are all the same. To me, to me the bow makers are all the same because it's just, this is the whole, this part right here, this is the bow maker, right? So this part right here, this is the bow maker. If you're looking at the um, Bodabra, the piece in the middle, that's the actual bow maker. This is just a measuring board. 
this is the only part that you really have to be worried about is what's in the middle. The rest of it is just a nice board to measure things. <laughs> so, yeah, Bodabra. Right, so, I don't even know, where is my Bodabra? Um, uh, here it is. All right, so look, once again, same exact thing, right? This part is the bow maker. That part's the bow maker. That part's the bow maker. If it's kind of moving around on you, I would just set something on it. Now we don't we don't sell this one, but we do sell these two. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just telling y'all that because as much as I love bow makers, and I do. You shouldn't have to anchor it. Um, I do. I love them all. But find one bow maker that you really like and just stick with it. Alright, so the small peg here is to keep these from getting out too wide. Alright, especially on this one. So you see here, you see how these pegs get loose? You see that? I mean, these pegs can come out, they can get loose, and especially if you start making a larger and larger bow. So you see how when you make a larger and larger bow, then those pegs start popping out. So that little peg, that holds it from popping out. So that's why you need that. I will say, this bow maker, it's heavier, and it's larger, and it has coffee on it. <laughs> it has coffee on it, y'all. So, um, this bow maker is larger, so it's heavier, so it's probably not going to move around as much as, like, this bow maker. <clears throat> but I, I, generally speaking, I don't have a problem with any of the bow makers. All the bow makers work great to me. It's really just kind of a personal preference, I think. Thank you. I'm so glad that you learn a lot. That's the plan. Okay. I got coffee on it. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> this is it's probably from when we were at the um, Junior League show and we were making just like ridiculous amounts of bows and drinking lots of coffee. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the Pro Bow. Pro Bow. Where is my Pro Bow? You can tell how much I use the Pro Bow. I don't even know where it is. Um, the Pro Bow is really great if you want to make very complicated bows. If you don't want to make very complicated bows, I hi, I really wouldn't even get that one. She has a tool called the um, is it the four in one or the five in one. It's very similar to these. I like those a lot better than I like the Pro Bow. So, that's just my personal opinion. You need to do it whichever one you feel most comfortable with, right? I'm waiting on, I, ha I have to get the order in on the Stow and Go. I haven't gotten them in yet. Hopefully it'll be next week sometime. Alright, so... Let's make one on this bow maker so you can see. It is truly no difference to me. Okay. One thing I really like to do, hold on, let's get a second ribbon. How about, oh, I don't know how much is in here. All right, let's just talk about doing it with two ribbons. All right. I really like to use small ribbons sometimes. Um, I think that she told me that it retails for $29.98. That's what I think she told me. And I think it's because it comes with... It comes with the spool holder and it comes with a bag, a carry bag. This one. This little carry bag. 
the um, bow maker's actually over at Megan's desk because she was playing with it. <laughs> so, okay. Here we go. Let's put the pretty one on top. There. One thing you can do is you can put your ribbon, if you're going to do like two ribbons together, you can stack them on top of each other and just pretend like you have one ribbon. Now you know of course I threw my ribbon in the floor because I just like it. It's easier to deal with. Alright, so we'll start, let's do seven inches. So we'll do seven. This is the exact same process I would do with one ribbon. I'm just doing it with two. Alright, so this is why I like the bow makers. One reason is because it has these little markings on it. You can see what measurement you are. These are one and a half inch ribbons. I do have both of these in my shop. Although the green that I have is like a lime green and white, not this kind of tannish. Okay. So I'm going to do two. Seven. Okay, and then we'll go down to six inch. Okay, so I can kind of move my ribbons. Just push them out away. The trick to this is just to be patient with yourself and your ribbon to keep them straight. Like that. Okay, we're going to do two of these. And when I'm doing a bow with two ribbons together, I do not hurry it because it's easy to get them offline if you're hurrying. Because you want to keep them together. And then, of course, this ribbon has the same pattern on both sides, but the other one doesn't. So it's important that I keep that one straight. All right. <laughs> All right, let's go down to five inch. Okay, so I can move the ribbons again. That's why I like it. So I can move them, move them. It's not going to matter. We're going to be able to get them back together. What is that getting caught on? Okay. Okay. So five. again. We'll see if we have enough of this green one. We'll see how much we got left. Oh, I think we're going to have to stop there because it's about out. There we go. That's okay. It's going to make a big bow. Okay. Let's get out. Oh, I have one. I'll just get out a little zip tie. Run my zip tie under here. There we go. Okay, pull it out. Okay, and then we can see where the indention is. So you see right there, that's where the indention is and you want to slide it around. Hold, hold your ribbon while you're sliding it so your bow doesn't move. trick with this bow. You're going to pull your two pieces apart just like that in opposite directions. Okay, so like that, like that, So you see how nice and big this is going to be because we did the two and then you pull them out. Hello. Alright, so 
Now I will tell y'all, I am going to work on some new sign and ribbon sets this weekend. I know, I'm sorry that we sold out so fast. I did not really expect that it would be quite as popular as it is. So I know we are out of the, um, the one with the dragonfly, but I'm working on doing a new one. I have to come up with a solution because we're out of those ribbons, but I will. I'll come up with a solution, so I promise you I will list more. All right, so there we go. Look how big and gorgeous that is. So if fluffing a bow intimidates you, remember you can always make yourself a fluff box and use that. I'm going to switch some of these because we have too many green going on down here. There we go. I know aren't the ribbons pretty, so I, y'all, I am like all into the spring now. Y'all into the spring yet? Because I am like, spring, let's go. I'm excited. I love spring because it's so colorful and pretty and I'm just ready. <laughs> yep. I was all about Christmas. Now I'm all about spring. Oh my gosh, how pretty is that? Look at that. And see how easy that was because we just did two together and we just fluff it out and you see how it makes a nice big round bow and usually I would even put like a couple more but we kind of ran out of that one ribbon it didn't matter it's plenty big thank you yeah I did twist the bow in the middle so when whenever I use the bow maker I always twist it in the middle just because it just makes it so much easier to use on the bow maker. Thank you. All right, y'all want to see my new signs? We got our bows done. I really like that bow. Okay. Yeah, so it's a little bit chilly here too. And I don't know, when it starts getting chilly, then I'm like, come on spring. <laughs> All right, so let's show you the new signs. And I will tell you which ones I'm planning to make a sign of ribbon set with. Alright, so we have the Flamingo. Pretty sure I will make a sign of ribbon set with that. I think I showed y'all this one already. This one's the Butterfly. The Dragonfly. I will be doing another sign of ribbon set with that. Flip Flops. And we will be doing a sign of ribbon set with that. Look at the rooster. Look at the rooster. Isn't he cute? Definitely doing a sign of ribbon set with this. This one is the eagle. Doing a sign of ribbon set with this. It's a peacock. Swan. I really like this one. Cardinal. If I can find some ribbon, we will do it on this. Yes, they're stained glass. Well, they look stained glass. I mean, they're really not stained glass, but bunny. And let me tell y'all, I had to figure out the stained glass process. It's quite the process. <laughs> but I got it now, so now I can do them. The ruffle tool, yep. This. So there's the ruffle tool. You can see it has these little notches on the inside. And that just keeps your... Um, mesh from popping out and then this one I'm for sure doing a sign of ribbon set with this one so which one's your favorite do you want me to show you how to use the tool let me see I don't know do I have any mesh in here yes do I do? All right, let's get zoomed back in. I'll show you. Oh, I have a hummingbird, but I'm going to tell y'all. So, um, the good news is I have a hummingbird figured out. The better news is it's going to be next month's kit. <laughs> so, what do you think of that? How about that? And it's going to be purple. 
and turquoise. Yes, it is. All right. So when I use the ruffle tool, okay, so I take my mesh. I like to get the little edge just to keep it from fraying. I load it just like that, just inside the little tool like that. I push it all the way up. So I'm pushing with my thumbs. You see how I push with my thumbs? And then this little piece here, I just pull right in like that. All right, if you wanna set it up to put ribbons, I set it up and push the mesh down. And that's what holds it down. And then you can load different things in it. When you're getting ready to pull it out, you want to pull it fairly forcefully because these little pieces at the end are there to, of course, you know, keep them in. Right? So if I'm going to do a woodland ruffle, then I'm going to do, put this down. I'm going to do my little curls. I'm going to take the tool. I'm going to place it in there just like we did before. I'm going to push with my thumb, always pushing with my thumb. All my fingers do is they're just holding the mesh straight, essentially. And then I just curl a few times and then push it right in. And stand it up again. And that's it. That's how you use it. You love the rooster? I'm good. How are you? Okay, so let me tell you, I am, oh, awesome. I am, if you have any trouble with the tool, please let me know because um, I definitely stand by it 100%. So you just need to let me know if you have any problems with it. Um, so the signs I'm working on that I have had requested for the stained glass, a strawberry, um, a lighthouse, a church, and of course the hummingbird. So if there's others you were thinking about, you'll have to let me know because those are the only ones that I know of right now. <laughs> so, there. I know I love the peacock one. The, the bee, I like the bee too. And I have some really awesome bee ribbons, so we're gonna have fun with this one. I'm gonna try to do um, a sign of ribbon set with this one this weekend. I like the eagle too. Awesome. I know a church. I'm excited. Yes, I don't know when it'll be in, but um, just waiting on it to come in. But I will. I will have the duvet maker. Did you get more ribbon? Holy cow, you bought 50 rolls? <laughs> I think you are going to be set. For like a while. <laughs> you go. Um, uh, yes, it is the same green I used last night. The the one with the um, check, the line. It is the same ribbon in this one. Yeah, sure is. And it looks really cute with the, um, with the little Easter ribbon here. And it also looks really cute with the tulip ribbon. I love the tulip ribbon. I get this every year because it's just one of my favorites. So, yeah, the one from last night. Sure thing. There you go. That's the wreath from last night. So, see, it's the monarch butterfly, and it has that monarch ribbon with it. See, and then it has the lime green. See the lime green? Awesome. I have stuff on the floor, so I'm trying not to trip over it. <sighs> and we put, what we did is we put, um, we put some uh, little boxwood that has these little white beads on it, and we put some dogwood in it. So it has this, these little dogwood flowers in it. Uh, the tool is called, um, holy cow, you got it for, yeah, you told me that, $3. That's amazing. The tool is called the Deco Mesh Ruffle Tool. That's the name of it. So, 
we are out of the rotary cutters, but um, I should get some more in soon. But this is um, the Sullivan's one, and you can get it from, is it called My Notions? I believe it's called MyNotions.com, and they carry this. They're not terribly expensive. I love the Eagle Tea. It's pretty. Yep. Yes, she did see. Yep, Share Bear saw the monarch wreath, and she's she's been texting me. I'm obsessed. So, what do you think she'll be doing the next time she comes over? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. So this mesh holder is one of my very favorite things in the world. Saves your life. Do you know that you can put your ribbon on it too? Did y'all know that? You can put your ribbon. So if you don't have a spool holder, there you go, spool holder. Mm-hmm. So when I first started doing, look, there's more coffee. When I first started doing <coughs> cut ribbons, <coughs> excuse me, I would put my ribbon on my mesh roller and I would measure it out. So. Oh, Mama's Easter Bunny? What about the Easter Bunny? Yes. Yep, we sell these. So we make and sell these. Yep, we have plenty of them. And we make and sell the Deco Mesh Ruffle Tool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I put a link to the plastic needles um, on my website. If you just go to Shop Hard Work and Mom, if you look on that main page, if you go down just a little bit, there's a link to the mesh roller and there is a link to the um, weaving tool. So the mesh roller is sold by Susie's Recent Things, but we went ahead and put a link. And these are sold by Reef Decor by Dawn, and we put a link to that as well, just so you can find it. The mesh rollers, mm -hmm. I want to say they're like 70. Oh, it's the Deco Mesh Ruffle Tool. Yep. What show what I made in a design group? Okay. This is what I made in the design group today. So you see the little bunny? I get, I'm guessing this is officially my mom's wreath because she's already told me that it, she sees it on the door. So this one has, we did um, little tulips in it. And I said, I felt like he had fallen down in the grass amongst the tulips and stuff. There's little eggs in it and a lot of greenery and apparently a lot of glue. But isn't he cute? He's cute. He's really cute. So we made that today in the design group. Y'all see how klutzy I am? I will fall over myself. <laughs> klutzy is my middle name. I should create... Good idea, Susan. Oh, you like it. It has little um, eggs on it, which is kind of like balls, right? <laughs> is the bunny two pieces? Yes, it is. It is. It's the um, legs with the little body and then the head. It's two separate pieces. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. And I started making some tips for y'all a little short, like one to two minute little tip things. Oh, how sweet your husband is. <laughs> Paul's and eggs are the same for sure. Um, so the wreath base is a um, evergreen. It's an evergreen wreath base. A 24 inch one. Yep, the purple wreath. So this is the one that we had the um, sign and ribbon set on that sold out so fast. 
I'm still working on, so what I have to replace is the purple ribbon, because y'all, we sold out of that. <laughs> and this blue, I have some of this on the way, so now I'm just trying to find some of the purple. Yep. Doesn't it make you just want to, like, spring? <laughs> Thank you. So we are going to do, um, I don't have any of the bunnies, um, but when I'm getting ready to make another order, I was going to look for some little bunnies. That one actually came from um, Carolina Pottery. Yeah. Thank you. So next month we are going to do a purple and turquoise with a hummingbird. So that's the plan for next month. I, I'm i like maybe 80% done with the sign and I have the mesh picked out. That's about as far as I've gone. <laughs> he also got you the pro bow. He needs lots of bonus points. Thank you. Yeah, Susie does have a lot of awesome tools. You like the orange one? I like the orange one too. <laughs> That's why you wanted me to show the wreath. Yeah. Awesome. The bow making tips? Um. So when I get done, what we can do is we can download um, this video and take out just the little parts and then put a little video on so y'all can see it. Do you have like one that's like in one piece? Yeah, so um, if you go to Santa Marta Designs, she makes really super cute um, the little bunny butt parts I don't I, I think she does the heads too but that's a really good place to get them as well yeah you could cut it and sew it yeah <laughs> listen so we do um, we do bows every single Friday actually we do bows like every day but we are certainly here on Friday so we come on at 8 o'clock so if you come on at 8 o'clock we will do our best to get you more comfortable with your bows right so I load the monthly kits on the first of the month and then it sells for the whole month and then you know on the 31st it flips over how do you make a fluff box okay so if you look here this is my fluff box it's just y'all this is that MDF stuff so if you look at it, it's just a hollow piece of wood, like a little box. And it just has um, a little eye hook in the middle and a little nail on the end. So anything that's heavy, like if you have, um, I don't know, anything that's made of like wood that's heavy. These are heavier because they have that MDF. That MDF is so expensive. Yep, we had to switch. We were doing them on Tuesday, but we ended up having to switch. Oh, a turtle. I can definitely do a turtle. Oh, ice hockey. Oh, yeah, so um, Hobby Lobby has that, not Hobby Lobby, Home Depot. They have that giant piece of wood, and a lot of people make signs and stuff out of it. That would be an amazing fluff box because it's heavy that would be a good I put a handle on mine just because I'd probably drop it on my foot old cutting board that's a good idea I like it where do I get my ribbon from so my ribbon comes from wholesalers um, some of the wholesalers I use are like um, Craig Bachman and um, uh, Joscatina and pottery there's a lot I have like a whole big list of people I get and sometimes I have to go to all of them before I find what I'm looking for so 
Yeah, Home Depot will cut it for you. Yep. A football sign. I can do a football sign. Yeah, so to um, to do the wholesalers, you need a, a retail license. So you need to get a sales tax license with your state. Every state's different, but um, once you get that, then you should be able to order from wholesalers. The way wholesalers work is that you have to buy a minimum. So a lot of them, some have minimums. I mean, it can be anywhere from uh, seventy-five dollars to two thousand to even larger. Some require you to have like um, a total pallet to order, and some require um, you know like Sims pottery. It's just seventy-five dollars. So it's not that big a deal. This is, let me tell you. Hold on, let me see. It is 12 by 12. This is 12 by 12. And it is heavy. <laughs> All right. But don't worry, I'm gonna be doing some um, business tips. We're gonna start doing business tips on Monday. And we'll talk about a lot of that stuff. Ooh, a gymnastics sign. I think we have a gymnastics sign. Although not in stained glass. Yep. Do I sharpen? No. So, uh, these rotary cutters, they come with extra blades. We'll see if I have any in my little drawer here. Let me see if I have any in here. I may, I may not. Mm, not in that drawer. No, I think they're out there in the other room. I'll have to find them and then I'll um I'll show you how to change them online. Because it's really easy. They all have these little screws on them, and you just unscrew it. Take it apart like this, like that, and then you can change out the blade like that. And then when you put the new blade in, you just put it all back the same way. And voila, you do not need to buy a new one, you just get the blades. I never thought about selling the blades. There's a lot of things I apparently never thought about selling. I can. I mean, my wholesaler has a lot of that stuff if you want me to. Um, I don't know. But I, I, as soon as I find some cardinal ribbon, then I will do that one. Record a happy dance and post it. Y'all are so funny. All right. Well, I hope y'all have a great night. And um, if there's something that you specific that you want me to do a business tip on, you just need to leave me a comment. Okay? Because we'll be checking back. And then we'll work on those. Yep. And if you need more help than that, then um, you can join the business group. As a matter of fact, in the business group, um, what we're doing now, we're providing... A year's worth of content to actually post on your social media so you have enough for an entire year probably more than a year but goats oh I like goats awesome all right y'all have a great night and I'll see you guys on Monday for sure maybe so tomorrow I'm gonna be at the studio tomorrow so Maybe I'll get motivated and come on. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. Uh, be looking for the sign of ribbon.